All right. Today is Thursday, June 3rd. This is a recap for the stock market activities today. We have three main events. The market overall remains boring, still within the consolidation range. However, we're starting to see the Nasdaq, even the S&P 500, starting to slip out of range. And the closing of the week will be extremely important. And the reason is, tomorrow we have the big jobs report from the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, aka the kitchen. The bond market will react and we will see a reaction in the stock market as well. And the weekly closing will be extremely important from a technical perspective to plan for the week ahead. Now, the three main events that we had today, number one, the macroeconomics data, pretty much every single piece pointing out that inflation is getting hotter and hotter and hotter with no stop in sign. Number one, we had the ADP private payroll report indicating that the private sector created about 1 million jobs last month. Furthermore, the weekly jobless claims also dropped below 400,000, which is an important milestone. All of these are indicators that we are seeing a recovery underway in the jobs market hand in hand with the rise in inflation. And we could argue about the chicken or the egg argument, whether higher inflation is responsible for recovering jobs or vice versa. The jobs recovered creating income and that income is spent in the economy creating inflation. We can go back and forth and argue all night long. However, what matters to the market is the recovery in the jobs market is an indicator that the Federal Reserve is getting very close for achieving its objectives. What does that mean? It means tapering the cocaine operation. Tapering will not be good for the stock market because it is part of monetary tightening where the era of easy funny money that supported the market for over a decade starts to diminish. But perhaps the most important number we got in the morning was the ISM non-manufacturing index for the services sector in the country. That number was the hottest ever all time highs reading but again the inflation deniers the federal reserve continue to say oh but where is inflation we don't see inflation is it here is it over there i don't know and even if there is inflation it will be transitory trust us and by the way the information we got in the morning created the perfect build-up for tomorrow's trading day the anticipation of the big jobs report and the question is if the number is too hot would that spook the market because it puts us closer to tapering remember good news is bad news for the stock market good economic news is bad news for the market and the reason is good news means that the federal reserve will have to taper the cocaine operation meanwhile bad news is good news for the stock market because it means that tapering is not even in the horizon. Okay, what is the second main event for the day? You guessed it, the jungle called AMC, the apes. These are the new breed of morons. Trust us, this time it's different. This time we're gonna show them. Show who, you moron. Who are you fighting against? The apes are fighting an invisible enemy that doesn't even exist. Uh, we're beating the hedges, bro. Uh, we're the captain of the ship right now. No, you're the captain of the shit, not the ship, because there is no short squeeze. The shorties are actually laughing in the background, riding the ride higher, and then pulling the rug, joining the downside by buying puts and cashing in both ways. Ways. Meanwhile, the apes, the Robin Hood idiots, the donkeys and the likes end up holding the bag. But luckily for them this time around, the bag will be filled with popcorn. At least you're gonna get something out of it. But here's what happens. And here's the cap on this uh, mania, the squeeze, whatever you're gonna call it, stampede. AMC management put a cap on the mania by dumping over 11 million shares today alone, exploiting the mania to fix their broken balance sheet. This is a company that was on the brink and still on the brink of bankruptcy. The movie theater business is a dying business. It has changed forever without AMC. So regardless of the capital raises, the path for this company to recover and become a thriving company once again is very extremely remote. Furthermore, AMC in the morning issued a warning saying to the apes, stop it. 
Stop it. The price action has nothing to do with the fundamentals. Oh, and by the way, if you buy the stock, be prepared to lose everything. Everything. What did the apes do? Did they panic? Get the message? Take whatever bananas left? Leaving the jungle once and for all? Of course not. The apes believe that AMC will go to the moon, bro. And even the management of AMC, the CEO himself, he doesn't understand the potential for AMC. We, we the apes, the Robin Hoodies and the likes, we know about AMC more than the management itself. And the management is saying, well, okay, if these morons are going to make us richer, fix our financial problems, we hit the jackpot. We won the lottery. Who cares? We're just going to butter them, make sure that we baby talk to them to keep them hoodling. That's what they want to do. Hoodling. We hoodle, bro. Till the moon or till we lose all of our money. AMC management says every time the stock will pop higher, every time and every day the stock remains elevated at these levels, we're going to dump more and more and more shares the tsunami of dumping until the stock crashes the stock the company itself is betting against you every time you buy they're gonna dump 10 more shares on your little head and the apes of course they did not get the message perhaps they don't speak english but even an ape they wouldn't get it the stock opened down significantly in the morning by the tune of 30 percent and more of course the apes so that as an opportunity the management says don't buy the ape says okay we got it we're gonna buy more again who are you fighting against the hedgies are making money off you the management is making money off you the shorties are making money off you who are you fighting against because when all of this is said and done you will be the only one left holding the bag anyhow they went naruto style heads first buy ask questions later Matter of fact, don't ask questions at all. And they bought the dip, and impressively so. AMC recovered and was trading to the tune of up 6% at some point during the day, reversing over 30% declines earlier in the morning. But guess what? The uh, roller coaster ride for AMC continued all the way till the end of the day, and the stock dropped again double digits and it continued to drop after hours. And the assumption is that tomorrow will be another day with a lot of pain the apes because after our amc management you know the silver back the morons think that he's on their side and the guy's laughing he's about to have a heart attack he can't believe how dumb these morons are but they're announcing that they're dumping another 25 million shares they dumped 11 million shares today they're dumping another 25 million dollars tomorrow and the dumping will not stop until the stock crashes once again the management is betting against you and they keep telling us that this is the smartest generation of investors give me a break the sheepies are the smartest generation of investors all of what they have to do is a simple google search about the dot-com bubble matter of fact about a few months ago a couple of months ago the first short squeeze with GameStop. how did that end you know the SPAC generation the smartest generation bro you don't understand absolute disgrace and by the way we're not talking about gen zers or millennials we're talking about this donkey generation of investors who invaded the market since last year and they come at all from all shape and forms all ages old and young and of course they tell me oh bro how dare you you call us the robin hood it's uh that's demeaning to retail investors this uh, type of mockery is supposed to be in our side give me a break you know who's a disgrace to retail investors you morons you give us all a bad name every time you participate in the market whether it is the dot-com bubble the housing bubble and this whatever bubble we always aim for the dumbest shit for example, buying Plug Power, a name that was a pump and dump during the dot-com bubble. All of a sudden, 20 years later, it's going to be different, huh? Of course not. Every time retail participates in the market, it becomes a period of wealth transfer voluntarily from dumb money, the poor and the middle class chasing lottery tickets, to the rich, Wall Street, banksters, and corporate insiders. And this episode is no different than past episodes. This movie will end in tears, AMC will crash, we will have a lot of retail who Hoodlers. Meanwhile, AMC executives and insiders walk away with billions and billions of dollars. The third main event of the day was Tesla, the souffle. The souffle is melting. First, they have a problem in China. Their sales got cut in half. But you know, the cultists keep saying, oh, but you don't understand, bro. Tesla is a monopoly. Oh, really? And we have yet another recall. Another one. 
This is the third recall in a week against Tesla. And therefore, you saw the shares dropping down by the tune of 5%. So the question is, given these three main events, how would that impact the trading day tomorrow? Because it certainly adds to the importance of the weekly closing. So this is what we are about to discuss in the duration of this video. But first, let's cover the market's performance today. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average down 23.34 points or a decline of 0.07%. The Nasdaq down 141.82 points or a decline of 1.03%. The S&P 500 down 15.27 points or a decline of 0.36%. What about the sector's performance? For the day, leading the pack at number one, capturing the gold medal, utilities. At number two, for the silver, healthcare. At number three, oh, wait a minute. That is a pathetic performance for the third place, so we're not going to give any medals. What about the laggards of the day? The wall of shame, led by consumer cyclicals, communication services, and basic materials. What about the advance to decline ratio? The New York Stock Exchange, 38% advancing versus 60% declining. The Nasdaq, 39% advancing versus 59% declining. Not a good day here in market breadth. It confirms the technical reversal in certain charts. Moving on to the futures market, we have muted activities for crude oil, pretty much closing at the flat line for the day. But we have losses across the board, whether we're talking Talking about softs, futures, metals, grains specifically. Massive declines and the reason is the US dollar is popping higher. So the correction in commodities is perhaps not over yet and keyword yet my expectations are that the u.s dollar will continue to rally for at least a few more days and that could add a lot more pain on commodities specifically metals and grains we have few green activities in the futures market today for example oj and cotton in softs futures we also have gains for lean hogs aka the new tech and feeder cattle futures other than that it is pain across the board Moving on to the big casino, the options market. What's going on? Number one, you guessed it, AMC. It's all about AMC. The majority of the volume in the NYSE trading came from AMC. It is absolutely stunning for a small stock to dictate and move the entire market. But here we are. This is the insanity land. AMC at number one with about 3 million contracts. About 54% of those were calls. Here it is at number two, Ford. Massive day for Ford, up over 7%. It's a big number for the options traded for this name. A little over 1.1 million contracts, but 81% of those were calls. Whether it is rallying as a meme stock or rallying based on EV optimism, doesn't matter. The principles are the same. Cheap call options, if enough people are buying them, the stock will move higher and you'll have a gamma squeeze. But the gamma squeeze ages and matures and it dies at some point. They don't have a long shelf life like short squeezes for example gamma squeezes last for a week two maximum what about number three here's another gamma squeeze blackberry this gamma squeeze is a little more fresh the name see it started a few days later but here it is blackberry with about 1.1 million contracts about 76 percent of those were calls and again you're seeing these heavily shorted names aka the meme names leading the activities in the options market today whether we're talking about nokia sundial growers workhorse clover lordstown all of these names are seeing heavy options trading activities what about the unusual trades taking place in the options market today once again disclaimer these trades are not conducted by me i'm not spending millions of dollars trading these options these are options trades that took place in the market by other traders not by me because i get messages from new subscribers saying what about that trade that you took and the options that you covered I'm like what trade what are you talking about these are trades that took place in the market not by me if i follow them i'll follow some and i will disclose that to you anyhow what about the ticker triple q's the nasdaq they're making a bearish bet here, a big one, by buying the 313 puts expiration date June 30th with expectations that the name will drop over 5% by then. They paid about 2 bucks and 55 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, bringing the total to about $14 million. What about the trade for the ticker OCGN? It's a biotech name and they're making bullish bets here, a big one. 
for a small name by buying the nine and a half calls expiration date june 18th with expectations that the name will rise over six percent by then they paid about a buck and 20 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all bringing the total to about 1.8 million dollars what about the trade for the ticker wkhs we talked about this name last night workhouse or workhorse some of you corrected me workhouse is a restaurant but i guess it's called workhorse who cares might as well be horse manure the company doesn't even exist as a prototype but no profit no revenue but that makes it a perfect stock for the robin hood idiots. although the valuation of the company was only about one billion dollars so if this changes from a concept company to an actual product it can grow into a one billion dollars valuation pretty fast in addition it has over 40 percent of the float shorted so the possibility of igniting a short squeeze in workhorse is a lot more likely than amc and therefore you're seeing more appetite for bullish bits or workhorse and in this case they're buying the 18 calls expiration date june 4th this one expiring tomorrow it's a pricey one but it is a bold one because they're expecting the name to rally over 22 percent by tomorrow they paid about 70 cents a piece to enter the straight that brought the total all the way to about one million dollars notice that for these meme stocks the heavily shorted stocks the scope of these options is extremely short meaning they're expiring the same week they're not expecting this uh, squeeze whatever you want to call it to be sustainable even the apes themselves they're not being honest with themselves but their actions speak louder than words if you are positive and a hoodler for amc that the future is bright and you don't understand bro you're just a boomer you're jealous then you're supposed to buy longer dated call options you're supposed to buy the hundred dollars call expiring in september because uh, it's a no-brainer the stock will be trading over 500,000 according to the apes by the end of the year but no they're buying the weekly expiration options way out of the money and then they're calling themselves long-term investors give me a break what about the trade for the ticker TAL, TAL Education? This is yet another volatile name, one of those Ar Archegos names that blew up and it goes up and down in massive swings, which makes it an options trading heaven. In this case, they're making a bearish bet for TAL by buying the 25 puts expiration date August 20th with expectations that the name will drop over 25% by then. They paid about one buck and 95 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, bringing the total to about two million dollars what about the trade for the ticker clf cleveland cliffs this is a classic steel name infrastructure name was running hot since the beginning of the year but it got caught in a nasty correction but here we have somebody conducting a bullish trade for clf by buying the 22 calls expiration date august 20th with expectations that the name will rally over nine percent by then they paid about a buck and 80 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all bringing the total to about 1.8 million dollars what about the trade for the ticker iwm for the iwm self-explanatory they're buying the 243 calls expiration date august 20th with expectations the iwm will rise over seven percent by then they paid about two bucks and a half a piece to enter the straight all in all bringing the total to about two and a half million dollars lastly what about the trade for amc this is a bearish bet expiring tomorrow for more downside for the name they're buying the 47 puts expiration date tomorrow with expectations that amc will drop over 17 percent by then they paid about three bucks and 60 cents a piece to enter this trade all in all bringing the total to about three and a half million dollars moving on heat map what's going on here the inflationary side of the trade fared better today we're talking about financials industrials energy all closed slightly in the green the exception was materials which closed decisively in the red massive declines for gold miners copper silver steel aluminum all of the commodity related stocks and the reason is the u.s dollar popped higher significantly today but the bulk of the pain came from the technology and the momentum names the disinflationary names massive declines for the big cap technology names tesla software the ipos names like airbnb which was outperforming the last couple of days down by the tune of four percent today there are few exceptions for example the ad performance from the drug manufacturers with the exception of merck you also have the old school tech names 
the likes of Cisco, Intuit, Oracle also at performing. These are part of the inflationary trade. So all in all, it was an inflationary themed kind of day, but not decisively due to the absence of materials. On one hand, we have yields popping higher. We have macroeconomics data pointing for higher inflation, but the US dollar is also popping higher. And the market is weighing in and processing all of that information. What about the themes analysis? Starting with the reopening names. We have declines across the board, but not significantly. You have names down half a percent, about a percent. The exception is the travel names, airlines, cruises, casinos, and hotels were down significantly today. So we did not see the reopening trade in favor. Perhaps the recovery in these names is peaking. What about the inflationary trade? All in all, mixed picture, but slightly in the green, no major movement one way or the other with exception of the metals commodities related stocks we have freeport mcmoran down significantly new man gold also down along with alcoa which is tied to aluminum prices and by the way why do commodities decline in value when the u.s dollar rises because it tames the demand it becomes more expensive for overseas buyers because they have to use U.S. dollars to purchase those commodities. What about the deflationary names? The high multiples, tech names, down significantly today. So we have one part of the theme playing out loud and clear. The weakness in the high multiple and technology stocks. You have names like DoorDash, Square, Peloton, Zoom, Tesla down significantly. Tesla has its own problems, but it was still trending lower starting from yesterday and the million dollars question is was the performance from these disinflation names was it a signal a leading indicator that yields will pop higher tomorrow after we get the employment report because if the report's too hot or perhaps too weak indicating wage inflation yields will pop higher and that will lead to more pressure downward pressure that is against the nasdaq and the high multiple momentum names moving on to the technical analysis starting with a 30 minutes chart of amc we are starting with the biggest story of the day here is the 30 minutes chart and you don't have to be a genius to figure this one out you have the double top formation you have the failure to cross in the macd indicator matter of fact starting to reverse curling downward meaning that the momentum is weakening so here it is the twin peaks in amc will it play out will tomorrow be a painful day for the apes that is the assumption what about the daily chart for amc what's going on here looking toppy look at the rsi the previous stop was in 96.58. We're getting there. We are at 95.39 at the top before we started to curl downward, meaning that the stampede, the momentum in this name is peaking. But will the apes listen? Of course not. Back to the human being market. What about the SPY? 30 minutes chart. Gapping lower in the morning, yet capturing the support of 417.30. Rebounding from that point, and by the way, closing an important gap, and rebounding all the way to 420 but again 420 is too high it is an extreme resistance level you need a catalyst to pop higher all of this consolidation is a gathering of energy we need the spark where will the spark come from what is the catalyst for the market to pop higher at this point we're past corporate earnings we're past the stimulus we're past vaccines we're even past the cocaine operation so we have to think about the catalyst that will push the SPY, the S&P 500, higher to close decisively above 420. And therefore, the weekly closing tomorrow is extremely important. Will it be above 420? That will be extremely bullish. Would it be below 420? That will be slightly bad, bearish, but not decisive. It would become decisively bearish if the SPY closes below 417.30 for the week. So the weekly closing tomorrow is extremely important. What about the daily chart for the continuous contract for the SPY? Again, grinding higher, but facing the resistance. This is the sticky level, the equivalent of 420 in the SPY. In the futures, it is 4,232. We are starting to lose momentum here in the daily chart from the RSI and MACD indicators but it is too soon to make a definitive call one way or the other. And therefore, we're waiting for the closing of the week. It will be extremely important. A clear rejection and a failure to crack above 4,232 will be an ominous signal for the market. What about the Qs? 30 minutes chart. What's going on here? Not looking as good as the SPY. The SPY managed to rebound and it is pretty much back at the battle of 420. The Qs lost 330 and a half for support and now it became resistance. Not by much, but it fell below it. 
Too early to call the chart bearish for the Qs, but watch chart for the weekly closing. Will it be above 330 and a half or below that level? And how far below? That will become important as well. What about the daily chart for the continuous contract, the Qs? Here it is. Not looking so good. The 30 minutes chart for the Qs looking okay, slightly bearish. But the daily chart for the futures contract not looking so good at all. Getting rejected from 13,718, which is an extremely important level to crack above. We're starting to lose momentum from the MACD and the RSI indicators. Both of them are curling downward, not upward. Furthermore, the chart broke the support of 13,599. Therefore, you guessed it. You're learning, you're catching up. The weekly closing is extremely important. Will it be above 13,599 or will it be below this number? Moving on to the IWM 30 minutes chart. What's going on here? We have a gap down. The IWM made an attempt to curl its way back all the way to the highs of the day closing the gap in the morning but it started to reverse before closing that gap and therefore creating a bear flag formation mind you this is a 30 minutes chart and the daily one so it is a leading indicator but it holds less weight than the daily chart if the bear flag formulates the chart could go down all the way to 223 which will be the next support level but here is the daily chart of the rut the russell 2000 the chart is trading above 2200 264 and therefore the bulls still have the advantage the 30 minutes chart is looking bearish the bears have the advantage from the bear flag formation but the bulls have the advantage in the daily chart the opposite situation with the nasdaq chart the bulls still have the advantage from a 30 minutes perspective but the bears are starting to gain advantage from the daily chart perspective what about the dixie here it is we had the descending line we had the saucer bottoming and finally here it is the big pop closing decisively above 90 and on its way to close above or at 91 we will see how far it will go by the end of the week but the rise in the u.s dollar is not good for what you guessed it gold matter of fact the rest of metals including copper but here it is we talked about gold that perhaps it is time for the bulls to take profits because it was a very steep very impressive rally off the consolidation around 1750 if you are greedy you got caught in a nasty day but if you are smart listened to the best and took profits you're in the clear you wait for the dip and you reload and you buy gold we will talk about where the bottom is but that is a subject for another day for now the weakness in gold will continue so long as the us dollar continues to rebound higher what about yields what's going on still going back and forth in a ping pong fashion between the support of 155 and the resistance of 1.62 but it looks from a technical perspective at least that yields are preparing for a massive pop higher once and for all reclaiming the very critical level of 1.7 percent and that could happen starting tomorrow depending on how hot matter of fact how would the market receive the information forget about too hot or too cold it depends on how the market receives and translate the information and if it decides to take it as inflation is rising higher then yields will pop higher significantly what about the tlt weekly perspective again not looking so good here it looks like the flip image of the map of italy and if that is the case then we have further downside to go to complete the italian map of the tlt that would take us below 134 and a half but all kidding aside the weekly closing is extremely important the momentum indicators are gaining some advantage but the chart is not moving significantly higher it is stagnating meaning the likelihood is it will break the support of 134 not pop higher this is the assumption but again the kitchen will be busy and hot at the bureau of labor statistics because they have to cook this one extremely carefully what about the vix what's going on here the vix consolidating building some energy the momentum indicators are starting to recover the threshold remains the level of 20 specifically the weekly closing closing above 20 will give market bears the advantage closing below 20 for yet another week will give market bulls the advantage and the most common question i get is why is the vix too low while we're seeing a nasty correction in the nasdaq the mania names the spac and now the meme stocks are starting to go down why isn't the vix moving the vix is pretty much the inverse of the spy it moves if we see bearish activities in the spy the spy 
has many components, including the high multiple and the technology names, but it also has inflationary stocks, inflationary sectors, financials, industrials, materials, energy. And if these sectors continue to rally higher, then the SPY will have a difficult time correcting. The only scenario where the VIX will pop higher in a sustainable fashion will be if the SPY goes down altogether meaning a fear situation. What will be the catalyst to ignite this fear in the market? In my opinion, it will be the tapering, the cocaine operation. And that discussion could start starting tomorrow. You see how important tomorrow is? Anyhow, what about Apple? What's going on here? We had the saucer bottoming around 125. We gave Apple the benefit of the doubt because it closed above 125 for the day. So it looked like as if Apple is primed to rebound higher. That did not happen. We saw a gap lower, a clear rejection from 125. And the chart is consolidating in a bear flag formation. This is the 30 minutes chart. And by the way, the 123 level is extremely important. It is not a major support, but it is an important support to keep because cracking below 123 will open the floodgates with the center of gravity to pull the chart of Apple down. Where is the center of gravity that is 120? What about Tesla, the souffle, not so hot so. The oven is too hot, it is burning the souffle, but the stock is not too hot. We talked about 629 as an extremely important number. The chart started to pull away from that number in a negative way. To the downside, today we have a confirmation that Tesla is not ready to crack above 629. And the likelihood is, will the chart crack above 629? Or will the chart crack the support of 640? If I was laying a bet, I would say that the likelihood is that Tesla will break the support of 640 before it breaks the resistance of 629. We're also seeing a loss in momentum from the MACD and the RSI indicators both with negative divergence. Not looking so good here for the souffle. What about the tulip market? What's going on with BTC? A little better than Tesla and the rest of the market because cryptos are rebounding. They're bottoming, but again, a lot weaker than before. Bitcoin and cryptos in general lost significant momentum. Look at the reading for the MACD indicator, way below the mean, meaning that the mania pretty much at a halt right now. What does that mean? It means that even if we see a recovery in cryptos, it's not going to be as hot and impulsive as we have seen before. Now, there is a potential that could happen some point in the future where we see a rotation from meme stocks back to cryptos. If that is the case, that could ignite another rally in Bitcoin. But for now, it is looking boring. It is stagnating. It is consolidating between the support of 30,000 and the resistance of 42,000. The chart will not gather steam to the upside until and unless it breaks the resistance of 42,000 and reclaim that level as support. What about Doge going all the way to the resistance of about 45 cents and pulling away slightly? Now, Doge went down along when we heard the news, the negative news for Tesla, that sales in China were down 50%. Now, Doge still has some positive catalysts, for example, the inclusion of Coinbase or in Coinbase, but it also has a problem, the association with Elon Musk. That was good for a while, but with that association with Elon Musk turns negative, as the problem against the man and the company piles up, we have an SEC investigation about Tesla board ignoring uh, Elon Musk's behavior on Twitter. We have a recall against Tesla and we have the sales in China declining significantly. So if Elon Musk becomes under pressure, then Doge will go down with him. What about Ethereum? ETH. What's going on here? It doesn't look bad at all. Bottoming process. Lost a lot of momentum, but it is gaining and recovering some of that. You see the curling upward in the MACD and the RSI indicators. Furthermore, the real test remains the level of 2,900. Closing above that level from a daily perspective will perhaps ignite another rally higher. It would not be as impulsive and aggressive as the first rally, but it could consolidate the chart at a more favorable level. Moving on to the conclusion of this video. What do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? Here it is. Fed Jerome Powell speaks on climate change. What is he, a scientist? You want to talk about climate change? How about the heat from the printer? All that printing, that's creating a lot of heat. Let's talk about climate change, Mr. Powell or... Dr. Powell, excuse me. Then we have the most important number, which is the non-farm payroll. Again, expectations are all over the place. The last reading we got was 266,000. and That came on the heels of the prior reading of about 1 million jobs created. Again, it is anybody's guess, but my expectations are the number should be hot. We are seeing recovery all over the country. Reopenings of hotels, casinos, cruises, 
bars, restaurants, service jobs all over the place. Job openings reaching highs we have not seen in years. The question is, is the labor force ready and incentivized enough to fill these jobs? Or will that add to more wage inflation? In my opinion, a hot weeding over 1 million will be bad for the market because it will solidify the inflation theory. A reading that is too cool, 250,000 or less, will also solidify the wage inflation theory. Therefore, my belief is that the cooks will give us a number between. They'll give us half a million, 600,000, 700,000 at the most, and that will confuse the market. Is it too hot? Is it too cool? We don't know. And if we don't know, let's pop the market higher. That is the assumption, of course. But again, the cooking will be difficult if the data itself is too hot or too cool. Anyhow, we got an important day ahead of us, so that's all I got for you tonight, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Game over. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.